I wear the uniform with pride. I mean, and, I, and it's nice to walk around this, um, this meeting with the uniform. Um, and so it's, it's something I take tremendous pride in. Um, while the practice that I do is maybe not super different, the medicine's the same as what someone would get at Johns Hopkins or at Georgetown, um, our patients absolutely love uh, to be cared for by one of their own. You know, the military provider speaks the same language, you know, has been the same places. You know, our, mil our medical officers go to the same places as our infantrymen. Um, and so I, I take tremendous pride with that, absolutely. I started at the Walter Reed Army Medical Center in Washington, D.C. as a, a brand spanking new intern in 1999. And so I've done a couple deployments and some tours and things, but uh, I then moved in 2012 over to Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. But that's, so between those two Walter Reeds, if you will, I've been there now for about 16 and a half, going on 17 years. For me, it has been the most professionally gratifying thing, um, it, it, most, the most professionally gratifying part of my career has been serving our veterans and their families. And as Walter Reed, we are one of the largest, if not the large, certainly the largest Department of Defense hospital in the world. And when you look back at our role during the conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan, um, you know, we were one of the primary sites for evacuations, along with obviously the, the hospitals in San Diego and San, San Antonio. Being a part of that has been um, just a tremendous honor and a privilege to do that. Um, and to be, have deployed during the, both of those, uh, both Iraq and Afghanistan, to be able to, to go to the battlefield and care for those who have put their lives in harm, harm's way is something that I'll never, ever forget. And it has been just, just a true honor. I would, do it, I would do it again in a heartbeat. I have loved every minute of it. I think I've also been blessed because I have been um, at Walter Reed um, I think that long because I've been involved in a training program and done a fair amount of research. And so it really gives me a lot of gratif gratification to see the data that has evolved from our, our care of our beneficiaries. Um, and to be, uh, for example, as a program director, to be responsible for the training for Army and Navy cardiologists and to see them go out and do great things and go out to become uh, leaders in the military healthcare systems to do the same things that I've done has been a, a, real, a real pleasure. I started there in 1999, and in fact, most of the staff there that I'd worked with had never been in combat. I mean, we were in the post-Vietnam and post-Gulf uh, uh, War era, um, and um, it was just something that a lot of us, we knew was a possibility, but uh, we really didn't anticipate what would happen. Um, and obviously that changed in, at 9-11, and I'll never forget, I was a, a third-year resident, I was in training. I was in my internal re medicine residency, and from the, the top of Walter Reed, you can actually see all the way downtown. Um, and I'll never forget uh, seeing that big giant plume of smoke uh, coming up from the Pentagon as I was rounding on patients. And I had not even heard the news yet. Um, and I think that was certainly, that changed all of our lives. Um, and it's affects obviously the lives of all of our family members who have dealt with the deployments and, and things that have come from that. So you're right, that was a, a life-changing event. We've obviously significantly scaled back the current number of our service members who are deployed. Um, but I, and so the, the number, fortunately, the number of casualties that we're see, receiving at Walter Reed and at our other sites is significantly lower. Um, but I, I always try to remind people that don't forget about the folks that are still there because we still have a number of cardiologists deployed. We still have a number of folks in harm's way. Um, we still have hospitals in Afghanistan and, hosp and hospitals in Kuwait that um, still see casualties. And we have, we have our service members in, in harm's way on a daily basis. And so while it's obviously much scaled back, um, and that's, I spend a lot less of my time doing consults on wounded warriors, um, we still, on a weekly basis, um, get folks that are coming back from the conflict. Um, and, um, and that's something that I always try to remind myself that we are a nation at war and this has kind of become the new normal. And so I don't think we've ever gone back to that pre-9-11 uh, you know, posture, if you will. You know, I think we all recognize that every day that there are people overseas, and quite frankly, my colleagues still get orders on a routine basis 
to go and be away from their families and to deploy. And that was something that pre-9-11 we didn't see. Now, obviously, the mission, we, we care for a lot more than just our wounded warriors. And so the day-to-day -day mission is still seeing a lot of folks who are retirees um, and folks who are not involved in the conflict. And that's kind of nice, too, right? We, we, we like to have that, um, you know, as obviously we like it when, when no one's coming back from war.